another episode of Beyond the Veil, where we take a look at how a Valentine Wolf song becomes a Valentine Wolf song. Though, I do have to tell you all really quickly, I had another idea earlier today in pre-production about some other things we could talk about on Beyond the Veil. But for now, we're going to keep um, journeying through Only Gossamer My Gown. We're looking at the third track on the record, Because I Could Not Stop for Death, my current favorite Valentine Wolf song, Full Stop. I know I've said that, I think, about our past three, but this is seriously my favorite Valentine Wolf song. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you why. Now, first of all, let's get the standard YouTube greeting out of the way. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notifications button, whatever it is we, you have to do to know that we've made another YouTube video. And this video and really everything on our channel is made possible by all of our supporters on Patreon, especially the denizens of Montresor Cellar. I do want to take a second and say that Patreon is right now far and away the best way to support Sarah and I and our music making. You get behind the scenes uh, looks, you get program notes, you get uh, early access. I'm pretty sure uh, the patrons got Only Gossamer My Gown within a day, Only Gossamer My Gown within a day or two of it coming out. So uh, definitely give that a, if you're in a position where you can, like I said, you get music for as low as a dollar a month. So check that out. I'll drop a link in the comments and all that stuff. Good stuff below. So now we've gotten the standard YouTube greeting uh, out of the way. Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Um, this was actually one of the last songs written for the record. Uh, I mentioned in previous episodes of Beyond the Veil, looking at Only Gossamer My Gown, one of the cool things about this particular record was we tried to play almost everything that ended up on it live first. I think that that's something that's really important to me, and Sarah sort of went along with it this time to let's perform these, kind of see how they felt, figure out what we liked and didn't like about doing them, rather than in the past sometimes there's songs we've written, then we've gotten on stage and sort of played through them, and it's like, wow, that section really needed to go on longer, or oh, that section was so cool, why did we only do that twice, and that kind of thing. So I was like, well, let's play through all this stuff uh, as a band before we record it. And for the most part, that's what we did. There was one song that did not make the record that we had played live quite a bit called The Sun Kept Setting, Setting Still, and that one was all on me. I could not really, when it came time to actually put it down, I could not make my bass parts work. On the other extreme is Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Now, uh, this song, uh, its origins were, we were working with another track. We were working on a song called The Color of the Grave, and... I had tried a variety of things. Sarah had written some really cool melodies and this really kind of interesting choral interlude part that I still think might show up on a Valentine Wolf music project someday because it's just that great and I want to keep it. But, you know, we played The Color of the Grave, I think, a couple times. And both times I was like, you know, it's difficult for me at times to trust my intuition and... That's one of the things I want to discuss further in another episode of Beyond the Veil. But for now, uh, the reason being is I second guess myself quite a bit. And um, I think that usually what I look for, kind of knowing that it's how I work, that on the one hand, I kind of like to, in a perfect world, I would work love to work intuitively, but that's not really how I'm wired. So I look for repetition if I still kind of feel and think the same way. A few times down the road then I kind of can go okay well then that's this is probably I should probably pay attention to those little you know that warning flag or the hairs on the back of your neck standing up so after um, a few uh, attempts at playing the color of the grave I told Sarah you know I, I, I think there's a lot that's cool here but this song is not working for me and she said you know that's okay, I'll write you a new song and we'll go really quick and maybe we should do Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Now a funny story that I tell when we talk about the song is that years ago when we did our Once Upon a Midnight project, uh, Sarah wanted to do Annabelle Lee. I flatly refused to do Annabelle Lee. I, th I thought, no, it's just, that one's way too obvious. We need to do some deeper Edgar Allan Poe cuts and if you are following the band and you're listening to us, if you have heard our music before, you know that generally if you can name a Valentine Wolf song, it's probably Annabelle. 
So when she said, I'm going to set because I could not stop for death, I said, you know what? Fine. Great. Absolutely. It's going to be awesome. Now, the interesting thing, though, is the very first part of the song, the very first aspect that the first little demo that I got to hear was the section that Sarah called her Deathscapes. And after hearing these cool deathscapes, I was like, okay, I think we could do some really, really cool uh, things with these in terms of layering them up, in terms of um, fitting them into the song. Um, the second thing that Sarah wrote that was really cool, um, because I could not stop her death, is a kind of a really good example of a remote, con what I call like remote control riff writing. We wrote it together, but not sitting down in the same room. There's this really interesting riff she wrote at the very beginning. It's very progressive rock, progressive metal, that sort of the whole band doing a lick in unison thing. And it sounds very simple, but it drove me berserk trying to record it. And here's the riff. Yeah, it doesn't sound like there's much to it, right? But for me, as long as I, you know, for all these years doing all these etudes and scales and orchestral excerpts, my hands like to move in a certain way. And Sarah writes riffs that mostly do that. But there are those little twists and turns where my fingers don't want to go where she's written or it, my fingers just don't want to do that. And I've learned over the years to pay attention to those, you know, um, we're very fond of the quote, there is no beauty without some strangeness of proportion, strangeness of proportion. And I have learned that those little, you know, when my brain gets short circuited, when my hands don't do what they want, when I'm like, this is really, wait, huh? Those are those strangeness of proportion moments. And if I take them out or ask her to rewrite them, then it kind of loses its charm for me a little bit. So. We had that really kind of cool, what I call progressive rock riff. The other thing, um, and because I could not stop for death riff wise, is we finally, when we were trying to put it all together, I was like, well, what can we do for what we were calling the verse section? And uh, I realized there is sort of, um, there's a technique, I call it the Nightwish verse. And I think that pretty much every metal band with a soprano vocalist kind of at one point or another does the Nightwish verse. And it's cool. It's one of those cliches. It, you know, you hear it all the time. And if you've never thought about it before, I'm about to wreck a fair amount of bands for you because you you won't be able to unhear it after this. But it's still a cool technique, and and it's fun to use. And I realized it had been a while since we did it. And that is, the first verse is just the voice, the bass, and the drums kind of stripped down to something very very. Baron and I think Nightwish they did that. Um, man, I'm probably probably earlier than I can remember, but you know when I think of Nemo off the Once record, that you know it, there's that big bombastic opening and then the texture, um, meaning just what instruments are playing. There might be a little bit of keyboard, but then there's the singer and the bass player and the drummer and they groove along and and if, now that you know to listen for that, you will notice almost. Every band that is Nightwish or a variation on Nightwish does this. Um, but it's kind of awesome. And I realized we hadn't done it yet. So that's why we threw in our first verse with our, uh, what I call the, I called the Nightwish verse. Now, the, for lack of a better term, the chorus, when we were working with this, we just sort of called it section A and section B. Um, it has one of my favorite Valentine Wolf riffs we ever wrote. Um, one of our good friends who is part of Montresor's cellar, Corwin, said he really liked this riff too, and it reminded him of, I, I think I may be remembering this right, but I remember Corwin and I have talked a lot about our love of um, Black Sabbath, but when Ronnie James Dio was in the band, and especially the Heaven and Hell record, and maybe I'm 
remembering incorrectly, but let me know in the comments. Um, there was this uh, reminding of that kind of riffing that Tony Iommi did on the Heaven and Hell record spe specifically. The way we wrote that riff was Sarah had written sort of a synth part and the vocal part together, and I sat down and I looked at what she did. I actually did look at the notation and realized that the melody she was saying, the harmonies, the the chords were grouped in a very, very interesting rhythmically offset way. So it really added itself a little bit to the syncopation that you'll kind of hear now. really dig that riff. I, I, I always have. When we first heard it on the playback, it was very cool. So um, before I talk about the solo section now, I will uh, sort of kind of skip to the end. So I'm kind of doing this out of order, but the song was out of order. The reason that this is my favorite Valentine Wool song is, you know, I have learned over the years, looking at the people I admire, looking at the artists that I look up to that I'm trying to learn from, that really you can define success in a lot of ways. And I know every band ever says, our newest album is our best, it's our darkest, it's our heaviest. And I think that from the musician perspective, that is true, that because I think that you, you write a song or you create music, it really can apply to any, I think, creative endeavor. And there's things that you, wanted to do differently or wished you could do better or things that you're like this is cool but like what if I could do something a little bit different and you know over the years especially if you've gotten to hang out with me at our shows or a convention or whatever I, I kind of joke about it and I'm not trying to be self-deprecating but I will say it's I realize it's really maybe not the healthiest place to be mentally um I joke that I can't really listen to our own music that all I hear is the flaws and I think that while it's fine to want to, you know, grow and to be better, whatever that means, or listen to uh, your heroes and do something that is worthy of them, I think there's a lot to be said for just being proud of what you did. And what I love about Only Gossamer My Gown, and this is as genuine as it gets, is this is the Valentine Wolf record where... Yeah, I still hear things that I want to do better, but whenever I listen to it, I think, wow, like that's us. Sarah and I, we did that. And I, the first moment I did a working mix of Because I Could Not Stop for Death, and she and I sat down, and I hit play, and we heard the whole song from start to finish, I was like, I am just really proud that we made that. And I think that it's got her beautiful soaring vocal melodies. The Deathscapes have these really cool vocal layers in it. It's got a really, really cool riff collection. Um, it ends in this open cadence. We It's another song we ended, not in the tonality we began with. And I generally think if you hear Because I Could Not Stop for Death and it is not your cup of tea, if you say, should I go back through the rest of your catalog, my knee-jerk reaction is probably not. I don't think you're going to like what we're about. I think that this song is everything that Valentine Wolf is about in one nice, neat package. Which is how I put the solo section together. Because if you listen to the solo section, I'm not going to play it all for you right now, but I will play us out a little bit. The solo section was... I listened to all the riffs that came through the song and kind of reorganized them in kind of a summary of what had come before. And then um, I name checked my friend Corwin. There are a few times where he's given us feedback and he's like, man, you just need to really shred on the solo. So my goal was, you know, Corwin, I was thinking of you. I was like, I am going to write a solo where hopefully Corwin will say, this is great or even better, it's a little over the top. So. I kind of intentionally went nuts because almost always when he and Sarah have given me that feedback, whenever I, uh, 
you know, I start I'm thinking, oh, I will be tasteful and minimalist. I will play notes. And when they say, no, you can wiggle your fingers a lot faster than that. Well, those are the ones that generally make the record. So um, that's what I have to say about Because I Could Not Stop for Death. I'm going to play the solo uh, section over the credits. Um, if you have not checked out Only Gossamer My Gown, you can get your copies on our website or you can hear it on our band camp. Even here on our YouTube channel, I think we have a playlist. You can go check the track out. Um, and I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you for, um, you know, checking out what I've got to say about this song that obviously means a lot to me and means a lot to Sarah. Questions, comments, whatever, let us know. Um, you want to ask me something about this song that I didn't cover? Um, oh, I forgot. One of the coolest things about it is there's this section in one of my favorite Valentine Wolf moments, this big middle section deathscape right before the solo. So maybe I'll fade it in. There's this really cool trick I had to do with multi-tracking the bass because my hand is only this long and the chords we were trying to play were that far apart on the bass. So I don't know if you can see my hands, but that's the fun thing about being a bass player in a metal band with no guitarist. It means sometimes you have to get really creative to grab all those notes. But um, anyway, hope you're digging going beyond the veil with us. And again, as I said, ask us questions in the comments. We love hearing from y'all. Um, and if you've not heard this track in a while, um, you know, pop it in. Turn it up to 11. Throw some horns and uh, realize really life is Take Emily Dickinson's word for it. Life really, really is short, and we might as well have fun with it. So that's all for this uh, this time. I'll be back soon with a deep dive into another Valentine Wolf track, y'all. Mm -hmm.